Hi there. Welcome to How to Build Business Credit. I'm Jerry Detweiler. I'm Education Director for NAV, and I have two goals in this webinar. One is for you to understand how business credit can help your business grow, and the second is to give you exact steps that you can take to build business credit. So I want you to walk away from here with an action plan. I've seen remarkable results from business owners who take these steps, and I've seen those results come in a relatively short period of time. So no promises, but I do think you can see some good results if you implement what we're talking about here today. Again, uh, my name is Jerry Detweiler. I've been writing and educating uh, individuals and small business owners about credit and financing for many years. Um, back in the day, I wrote the first mass market book that talked about FICO scores. And uh, more recently, my latest book is Finance Your Own Business. And that's what brought me to NAB, where I've been for almost six years now. So I'm the education director there. I've also included some contact information there. So if you want to reach out after the webinar, connect with me on social media, by all means, please do. I love to help and support small business owners. Now, don't worry about taking frantic notes during this presentation because you have a couple of handouts that are helpful. And if you're watching this in a recording later, uh, don't worry, you will be able to um, download these from the comments below the recording that you're seeing. So the two things you'll get is the Build Business Credit Checklist. And this will give you the implementation steps for what I'm talking about. So you just download this Follow the steps and you will be following the recipe that I'm talking about in this webinar. The other thing you'll get is a PDF handout of the slides. So if you want to refresh your memory with some of the slides, you can do that through the handout. And between the two, you should be in good shape. All right, so let's talk a little bit about business credit. The Federal Reserve does a study every year of small businesses across the country, and they survey businesses with one to 499 employees. And in the most recent survey, they asked business owners, among other questions, what did you use when you applied for financing for your business? Did you use personal credit, business credit, or both? And you can see from these results that about 60% of small business owners surveyed used either business credit or a combination of business and personal credit to get financing. So at NAV, we believe both are important, and that's why in a NAV account, you'll see both your business and personal credit. We don't think you should focus on one at the exclusion of the other. However, there is some good news. If you don't have strong personal credit scores, you can still implement the steps that we're talking about today. In other words, you don't have to wait until your personal credit scores are at a certain number before you can start building business credit. You can do both simultaneously, and uh, that's actually what I recommend. Now, unfortunately, most business owners don't know their business credit. So this was a survey we did with Manta a few years ago, and we found that almost three quarters of small business owners did not know what their business credit scores were, and they weren't even sure in many cases how to find them or check them. So we'll help you overcome that hurdle if you're in that situation very quickly. All right. So why is business credit important? Well, it's important for a couple of reasons. The first is that some insurance companies will check business credit. So we had a NAV customer who owns an insurance agency and he was having trouble getting insurance for his agency, errors and emissions insurance. And it turned out that his business credit was mixed up with the business credit of another business in another state with a similar name. And they had negative credit. So once he got that off his business credit, he was able to get the insurance that he needed. If your business needs a surety bond, you may have a business credit check. If you're going for government contracts, you'll certainly need a DUNS number, which I'll talk about, and they may check your business credit, like your paydex score as well. In addition, certain types of financing will check business credit. So we'll talk about a few of these today, but vendor uh, credit and supplier credit very commonly checks business credit. SBA loans often use a uh, form of a FICO score that includes business credit. Some bank lenders uh, and loans will check business credit and then equipment financing may check business credit as well. So the good news is according to some research we did a few years ago, we found that business owners who understood their business credit were 41% more likely to be approved for a business loan. 
So we think that's a competitive advantage and we definitely want you to have that competitive advantage. Well, let's start with a quick quiz. Out of these credit bureaus that you see right here, one of them actually employed four former US presidents. I'll give you a moment, just go ahead and do it in your mind to guess and see if you have an idea which one of these bureaus employed four US presidents in the past. And bonus points if you want to think of a very famous, iconic president who worked for one of these agencies. Very, very famous president. Not that they're all somewhat famous, but. All right, the answer is Dun & Bradstreet. Dun & Bradstreet has actually been around since the 1850s, and Abraham Lincoln worked for Dun & Bradstreet back in the day as a reporter. So Lincoln, Kinley, Grant, and Cleveland. Those four presidents all worked for Dun & Bradstreet's reporters. Very prestigious job back in the day. So they'd go to these merchants, find out how you know their customers were paying their bills, transmit that information back to Dun & Bradstreet, and then I don't know if it was Telegraph or Mail or how they did it, and then and then they would uh, use that information when someone needed to do a credit check. So the three major commercial or business credit agencies are Dun & Bradstreet. Equifax and Experian. Now you probably recognize Equifax and Experian because they also do consumer credit reporting, but it's important to understand those files are completely separate. So the data about businesses never touches the data about um, uh, the consumer. And I've seen some comments because some people have been confused when they get a NAV account because we show personal and business credit, they think we're mixing the two together. That we absolutely are not, those two data sets always remain completely separate. And then TransUnion was on the previous slide. They are just consumer credit. They don't have a business credit product. Now, you may also come across something called the Small Business Financial Exchange, and they don't call themselves a credit bureau, but they're sort, they call themselves sort of a, like a warehouse for credit information. So a few years ago, all the major lenders, you know, all the major financial institutions you'd recognize got together and said, hey, we want to exchange information about how our small business customers pay their bills, but we don't want there to be a chance that it might be used for marketing purposes. So they created this, um, this ability to share that information. And then the way it works is if a creditor wants to get the data that's in the SBFE database, they get it through one of those bureaus. So they can go to Equifax. It used to be only Equifax. Now it's Equifax, Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, and LexisNexis all have relationships with SBFE. So they'll pull a report that has that information. And similarly, um, then that information can be reported into SBFE and accessible through those bureaus. Um, I bring this up because there are some lenders who, for example, you may get a business credit card and it reports to SBFE, but you don't see it because currently uh, business owners don't get direct access to check their SBFE uh, reports. So just understand that, that it may be on a credit report that's not showing up when you check your own credit report and that may change in the future. There's also some additional um, sources, InfoGroup, LexisNexis is one of them. Credit Safe is an international credit bureau we'll probably be hearing more about in the next few years. And then I put the post office up there, not because they're a credit bureau, they're not, but because on the business credit side, one thing I want you to be aware of is that there's no restrictions on who can access data or what type of data goes into a business credit report. And so it's possible that other data could be used to help make decisions about whether to extend credit to your business. So I'll give you a quick example. Experian, um, a few years, not well, maybe two years ago now, launched a social media score for small business. So a creditor who wants to check uh, a customer's uh, information, how they rank on social media can do so. And why is this important? Well, we've seen it at NAV on our lending team where sometimes lenders in the underwriting phase, they might go to the, the restaurant's um, Yelp account and see and if that restaurant has horrible reviews and it looks like it's going down, down the tubes, they may decide not to offer uh, credit to that 
to that business. So you want to make sure that any public information that's out there about your business, that you're aware of it, that you're checking it, that you're responding to things like reviews, because all of that is important. All that is important for the reputation and possibly the financing for your business. And just to go real quick back to the USPS example, uh, there was a conference where one of the major lenders, the CEO said, she said, I can, uh, we can tell more about a customer by linking to their shipping account and seeing how many boxes they're shipping, what size of boxes, how frequently, what are the zip codes is going to. So that's another source of data that may not be top of mind for you, but could be potentially used by a lender. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about business credit reports and then dig into how you could build your business credit as quickly as hopefully possible. All right, so business credit reports are very similar to personal credit in that they contain information about how your business pays its bills. And we'll talk about how to start one in, in a few minutes when we get into those steps. But I do find that there are a lot more differences um, than there may be with consumer credit. So this is an example of say a NAV customer where they have, oh, very good personal credit with both Experian and TransUnion, but on the business credit side, they have great credit with one bureau and not with another. And this is not unusual at all. Business credit is not as standardized. So on the personal credit side, typically, if you have a good consumer credit score with Experian, you probably have a good one with TransUnion and Equifax. Occasionally, there might be something that pops up on one report and not the other, but it's more the exception than the rule. With business credit, it's very different because lenders may report to one bureau and not to another. They may report only negative to a bureau. They, um, it just varies. There's no standardization on that system. So a couple of other things. If you go to check your business credit and you see some things that are surprising, I'm going to give you a quick heads up so you're not caught up too, too much off guard. The first is you won't see the names of creditors on a business credit report. So they don't have to report it and they don't. So they typically report it by type of account. So here you can see, see an example. They have a utility account. They have a communications account. Maybe that's your cell phone or, or telephone bill food distribution, maybe that's something like Cisco where they buy food for a restaurant, materials handling, they'll categorize it, but they won't name the individual creditors. So you have to be a little bit of a detective, especially if you have a lot of accounts and you're checking your business credit for the first time. The other thing you'll see is they don't report credit limits. So on your consumer credit, you may be familiar with the idea of utilization, where if you get close to your limits on your credit cards, that might affect your credit scores. Well, on business credit, uh, at least Experian does look at, at a form of utilization, but because there's no credit limit reported, they will instead look at the highest recent balance on the account because there is no credit limit reported. And then payment history differs. So on your consumer credit report, you'll see um, usually a grid that shows for the past 24 months, you know, whether you paid on time each of those months, and then there will be historical information going up to seven years about when you paid late. With business credit, they're going to group it by the percentage typically, not always, because uh, some reports go into a little bit more detail, but typically they will group it by the percentage of time that you paid on time. So it may or may not show exactly when you didn't pay on time if you didn't pay on time. And I'll explain payment history in a minute because it's important. And then finally, with business credit, there's no requirement that they provide you with free credit reports. Um, in fact, there's no federal law at all that covers business credit. So there's no law that requires them to tell you if you've been turned down based on your business credit. Anyone can check your business credit report. As long as they're willing to pay for it, they can get your report. And it can happen with a competitor uh, as, as well as you know creditors or others. A potential business partner could check it. There's no requirement that they handle disputes within a certain period of time, et cetera. So just understand it's a very different um, animal, but it's still very important. And so I want to give you steps to help you navigate it. All right. So how do you start building business credit? What's well, a little bit different than personal credit in some ways. Um, the business credit, the major commercial credit reporting agencies may start your file in a couple of different ways. One is if you file your um, company with the state to incorporate. So let's say you form an LLC, an S corp or a C corp, they may pick that up and may open a file on your business. Or you may get your first credit account in the name of your business. And if it reports, then that may start your business credit account. 
With one bureau down in Bradstreet, you can be proactive and request a DUNS number. This is their identifier in their system. I often get the question, is my EIN, my employer identification number, which is a identifier the IRS gives you for your business, is that the equivalent of my social security number in my business credit? And the short answer is no, it's not. In fact, we've done some research at NAV because we've helped over one and a half million business owners you know, access their data. And we found that a, many, a, a significant percentage, depending on the bureau, they don't even list the EIN. So instead, what happens is the bureaus create their own identifiers. So Dun & Bradstreet uses something called a DUNS number, which you can proactively request. Equifax uses something called an Equifax ID, which you cannot request. They will start that when they open your file, and they require an account that's reporting to open your file. And then Experian uses a business identification number, which they create. And Experian will pick up state filings um, from secretaries of state when those are available and open a file that way. All right, so let's talk about business credit scores and what's a good business credit score. So I'll let you guess for a moment in your mind what you think a good business credit score might be. Now, when I talk about this in workshops, usually I get answers like, 700 or 750 because most of us are thinking in terms of consumer credit and that's perfectly logical but in fact with business credit they use different scores and different scales so experian only uses the intellascore and intellascore plus and the range for both is zero to 100 and 80 100 is a great score so in a nav account you'd see an a if you have that that score range um, Dun & Bradstreet uses uh, a variety of scores, but their flagship score, the one they're most well known for is called Paydex, and that ranges from zero to 100. And again, 80 to 100 is the highest score you can get. And then Equifax has a variety of scores with all different kinds of ranges. And the one that we show at a NAV account is the delinquency score, 224 to 580. Now, just a heads up, the delinquency score is just the name of the scoring model. It doesn't mean you're delinquent. And um, it seems like our customers kind of freak out when they see that because they think it means they've paid late. And that's not true. It's just the name of the scoring model that Equifax has created. So you can see when you're checking your business credit, it's helpful to know what the score range is. So you can see what range you fall in and see whether there's perhaps some things you could do to build a stronger score. And then there's also a score called the FICO SBSS. And this is a score created by FICO specifically for small business. And it's gonna be really important if you decide to get an SBA loan in the SBA 7A program. That's their most popular loan program. It's a, it's a very flexible loan. And if you want a loan for $350,000 or less, the first thing the lender has to do is check this score. It's called a pre-screen. And the range is zero to 300. Zero is the lowest, 300 is the highest score you can get. Now, the SBA's minimum score has been 140. They just have raised that as of October 1st, 2020, it's going to be 155. However, our experience at NAV is that most, S most lenders who are making SBA loans want to see a score of at least 160 or 165 or above. Now, what's interesting about this score is it can combine the business credit of the business and the personal credit data of the owners, up to five owners. So anybody who has at least 20% ownership in the business, they will be subjected to a credit check if they're applying for an SBA loan. So even if they don't want to be part of it, they have to be part of it because the SBA is going to make that um, part of their screening for the small business. So it can combine that personal credit data of up to five owners plus the business credit of the business and the lender can even optionally add in financial data um, from the application or financial statements that they've received or tax returns. So they can, they can add additional criteria. So it's an interesting score and pretty flexible. I can tell you that we have had NAV customers who have excellent personal credit and they've gotten a passing score even without having built business credit, but it's easier to get a passing score if you have good business credit and good personal credit. So just something to keep in mind if you're thinking about an SBA loan. So let's talk about how to build business credit. I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step here and remember you can always refer to your e-guide as well. 
So the first step is you want to make sure that you set up a business entity. Now, some of you are wondering, can I build business credit as a sole proprietorship? And the answer is yes, you can. I'm going to give you a tip for that. But I want you to think about something. Until you have a legal entity, an LLC, S Corp, C Corp, um, some states you might choose a professional association for some businesses, until you set that up, you and your business are not separated. There's just, there's no separation because there is no legal entity that's separate from you as an individual. And so you can never truly, you know, effectively get business credit without a legal entity to, to separate your business and personal finances. We have some lenders on the NAV platform who just will not lend to sole proprietors. Some of them will, but some of them won't. So if you're going, if you're not ready to incorporate for whatever reason, um, and again, by incorporate, I include LLCs in that in that definition. Um, you can go ahead and at least file a fictitious name with your state. So pick your business name, check it to make sure there's no trademark violations. That's an issue um, has popped up more than once with businesses. And then go ahead and register it as a doing business as or fictitious name in your state. Uh, I live in Florida. It's 50 bucks to do that for, I think, two years in Florida. So it's not expensive. But that puts your name of your business on record. And that can help that in that process. Now, ideally, you want to pick a name that you're going to stick with and then incorporate into because then you can transfer that you know, to the name of the business and you'll have the time and business that you established initially as a sole proprietor. But I do think that's an important and helpful step and I encourage you to do that. Also, if you need to get business licenses for your uh, business in your state, make sure that you do so. All right, the other thing that will happen is you will, you will end up with a code that identifies the industry for your business. The older version of this is called the Standard Industrial Classification, or SIC code, and the newer version is the North American Industrial Classification System, or NAICS code. So they're similar, but SIC is a little bit broader than the NAICS code, and they're both used. So what happens a lot of times is when you incorporate, you put down your industry and that's where you pick up the, you know, the code. If you've ever wanted to apply for a government contract or a SBA loan, this will be very important because that determines your industry for whether you can apply for one of those loans and for SBA loans, the size standards that apply to your business to determine if you're really considered a small business. So if you've already established your business, this may be on your business credit report. Make sure that it's correct. I'll give you another example from a NAV customer. We had a NAV customer who manufactured signs that real estate agents would put in the front yard of homes that they're trying to sell. So he was a sign manufacturer, but he was having trouble getting finance and he dis financing. He discovered in his, in his NAV account that he had been assigned, not by NAV, by a lender or when he incorporated uh, a NAICS code that identified him as a real estate business. And real estate can be one of the higher risk industries. So when he got that fixed and got it to reflect that he was in sign manufacturing, more offers started coming in. So just make sure that you understand what that is and that it's accurate. You can find uh, the database for both SIC and NAICS codes online for free, and you can play around. Sometimes a business may, you know, it may not be clear where it falls or it may fall into more than once. You have a primary and then a secondary, that's fine, but you do want to make sure that's accurate. All right, step two is to separate your business and personal finances. Now, um, I really, 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 really want to encourage you to make sure that you have a business bank account. If you're not operating using a business bank account strictly for business pur purposes, please do. Uh, this is so important and it's increasingly important now as we move into sort of a, the beginning, hopefully at some point of a post COVID period, um, more and more lenders are insisting on seeing the business bank account to, to analyze revenues. And if you're operating out of personal account, or if you're using your business account to just pay personal expenses, it's not going to fly. So if you need to take money out of your business, 
then you want to either write a check or do a transfer to yourself and then pay your personal expenses. At NAV, we helped many borrowers um, match them to lenders for PPP and answered a lot of questions about those um, COVID relief loans. And we did find that a number of them ran into problems because they had commingled funds and it was very unclear, you know, what, what was associated with their business and what was personal. So I really encourage you not to do that. Um, it won't show up on your business credit report, but it will play a major role in whether you get financing. Step three is if you don't have a DUNS number already, you want to request one from Dun & Bradstreet. It takes about 10 days um, usually to get assigned one, although they say up to 30 days. The reason you actually proactively request a DUNS number is because DUNS numbers have been the identifier um, traditionally for government contracts and government um, grants. And so if you've wanted to apply for one of those, you have to get a DUNS number as your identifier in that system. Now, the federal government has awarded a contract to a new company. There will be a new number in the future. I don't know the date yet. I haven't seen that called the SAMI number, but for right now, it's still the DUNS number. So you could either go to the Dun and Bradstreet website, or if you have a NAV account, you can check through for free through the NAV account and see if you already have one. If you don't, you request one and that's a step. And again, you don't have to do that with Experian or Equifax, that will happen automatically. All right, now here's the main thing you need to do. You need to have accounts that show up on your business credit. I literally um, just heard from a business owner a few days ago who had gotten an AV account and said, well, why don't I have any business credit? I've been in business for 30 years. And the reason was he wasn't doing business with companies that report to the business credit agencies. So to build a business credit history, you need accounts that report. So we're gonna make it super simple for you. At this short link here that you see, nav.com slash vendors, you're going to see the names of vendors that report to business credit. These are all ones that are generally very easy to qualify for. They don't check personal credit. They report to business credit. And it's a great way to get started. So what you would do is you'd go to one of these companies, like let's say Crown Office Supplies, and you'd buy copy paper or um, you know shipping labels or shipping boxes or whatever whatever they have that you need for your business. And and many of these companies have a variety of products. You could buy disinfectant, and you could buy Keurig cups for your you know coffee machine. And then they'll let you pay in 30 days, so it's net 30 terms. You pay on time, and they start reporting. Now, sometimes it does take a couple of months before they start reporting, and a few of them may ask you to make a couple of purchases first to verify that you're a legitimate business before they extend credit to your business. But once you do that, you're on your way to building business credit. And again, I have seen some pretty amazing results for businesses that get proactive about this and open up two, three, you know, accounts and those start reporting, they often see that their business credit starts getting established quite quickly. Step five is to get a business credit card that reports. Uh, this is also a short link here, nav.com slash business dash reports is a list of small business credit cards and which ones report to which commercial credit reporting agency. So you could actually see whether the cards you have report or whether uh, one you're considering getting reports to business credit. And this can be a great way to build business credit. Now, I do have to caution you as we're recording September 8th of 2020. And as, as of right now, some of the issuers have pulled back. So you may find the offers are not flowing as freely as they were earlier this year. That is starting to open up a little bit more. And if you have a free NAV account or a paid NAV account, either one, you will see the offers that match your profile as they come back online. So just keep in mind that even if it's not a possibility for you right now, this may be something that's a possibility in the future. I will also give you a quick tip. Generally, small business credit cards make the decision based on the owner's personal credit scores and income from all sources. So they are often available to startups and brand new businesses. As long as the owner has good personal credit and enough income from any source, could even be a you know spouse or partner who's still working and would chip in if necessary, then um, often that decision is a yes. All right, then once you have a few accounts, you wanna make sure that you pay on time. And it's even more important with business credit than with personal credit that you pay on time. And why? Because the business credit reporting is very granular. 
they use something called DBT to report business credit payments to the credit bureaus. And I'll let you just think for a second and see if you have an idea what that might stand for. I often in my workshops ask this and I'll get some creative um, responses like don't buy that or death before taxes, but um, the answer is days beyond terms. So if you got one of those vendor accounts that said net 30 and it had, that means you have to pay in 30 days and you paid on day 32, you're two DBT. If you get terms that are net 60 with a vendor and you pay on day 62, you're still 2 DBT. So you can see it's much more granular. With personal credit, usually there's a 30 day buffer. If you forget your credit card payment, you're late a few days, it doesn't usually show up as a late payment until you're 30 days late. Same with your mortgage or your car loan. I've only once seen it with a luxury car company, their financing reported a 15 day late payment on personal credit, but otherwise it's usually 30 day buckets. So what this says is that you want to pay on time. Now, if you miss it by a couple of days, don't freak out. It's not going to drop your scores the way it would with personal credit. Uh, you can see here that at least previously, uh, this has probably changed recently due to COVID, but uh, the average DBT, according to Experian, across all businesses was 11. So it wasn't like every single business was always paying on time. But when you're building business credit, you want to set up systems to pay on time and even pay early because the way you get the highest paydex score is by paying before the bill is due. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you fix mistakes. So if you are checking your business credit for the first time, um, don't be surprised if some information doesn't look right to you or if it's incomplete. The Wall Street Journal did a study a few years ago and they found that I think it was 20 or 25% of the business owners who checked said there were either significant errors or omissions that affected their business credit. So my theory on this, and the reason I think there's more mistakes with business credit and personal credit is that business owners aren't checking. So remember earlier I said like 75% of business owners haven't checked their business credit. Well, if you aren't checking it, you can't really tell if it's, you're ultimately, you're the one who can look at it and say, oh, that's not my account or no, I wasn't late on that account. Uh, and also, of course, so many businesses carry similar names. Um, and so that could get your business mixed up with another business in another a state or another area. So just make sure that you're checking periodically to make sure it's correct. And then this is really important. So even if you're not thinking about financing right now, I want you to have this on your radar. Um, there's been increasing reports from the IRS, from the National Cybersecurity Council, from Krebs on Security, which is the leading uh, security blog, that there is a growing uh, number of business identity theft cases. In fact, um, the Krebs on Security uh, article that they put out about a month ago, they had some crazy stories in there, but one that stood out to me was a business owner who got a call from a landlord in a, like a strip mall or some kind of warehouse type facility. And um, there were packages being delivered in the name of his business to this facility and someone would come in and pick up all the packages and leave. And the landlord thought it was suspicious. Well, it turns out that they had opened up an office or you know, a location at this place and were, they were using that business's name to, to commit fraud, to buy things in the name of the business and then take them away. So it, this can be a serious crime. And if you're not checking, you won't know about it until a ways off, you know, when collect, debt collectors start calling or when you, legal action is taken against the business, et cetera. So monitoring your credit is a good and comprehensive way to help spot this type of activity. Because then if you see a new address pop up on your business credit or you see a new account that you don't recognize, then you know you need to investigate and figure out what's going on. I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to try to be alarmist, but I will emphasize that this is a pretty simple thing you could do. Uh, you could certainly do it with a NAV account. We just check once a month to see if you see any usual, unusual activity. We also send alerts, but that can be a way to stay on top of your business credit. And it can also help you as you monitor your progress. So if your goal is to build good business credit, then you can see your progress, see when accounts start reporting, when your scores start going up, and hopefully you'll see some good news there. 
Now, let me go over the top challenges we um, see at NAV and then a few resources. So the main things that we see with customers who come to NAV and um, have questions about their business credit is usually a lack of credit data, negative information, or wrong information. So let me give you a few tips here. Lack of credit da data, as I mentioned earlier, is very common. That's where you don't have accounts that are reporting, so there's just not much for a score. So if you go into a NAV account right now, you're a NAV account and you see, hey, my credit score is bad, it may not be that there's negative information. It may just be there's not enough information to get a high score. And so that may mean you have some work to do. So those vendor accounts that I mentioned can help it help. Business credit um, accounts can help. Uh, there's also a third party service. This is not an app, but it's a third party service you can um, check out where they can add reports that you're already paying, like your business utility bills to certain um, business credit reports for a monthly fee. So that may be an affordable solution for you to add a few accounts. And then um, NAV also offers uh, paid accounts. So many of our customers use a completely free NAV account, but we also have um, paid accounts, Business Boost and Business Manager, that will report your payment to the commercial credit agencies. So every month when that hits your credit card, then we send over that information to the credit bureaus. It goes to Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian and reports it as a trade line. And we've seen some good results from business owners who use this service. It's never negative information. It's only positive. And if you decide later you want to go back to a downgrade to a free account, um, it's still there. It just won't report any more information because there's no new information to report. So that will be something that you want to check out if you're trying to really accelerate your business credit building process. Now, collection accounts may appear on business credit reports, and I'd encourage you to check this section carefully, especially to make sure you're not mixed up with someone else. I've seen business credit reports where there's duplicates, like the same collection account reported three different times with three different balances. You want to make sure that you correct something like that so it doesn't make it look worse than it actually is and see if you can negotiate with that collection agency. Derogatory information can include things like um, UCC filings. Now, a UCC filing is when a when you get financing and a creditor has um, interest in the property of your business. So a great example is uh, some of you may have applied for EIDL loans, the economic injury disaster loans that were av made available through the COVID-19 crisis recently. Those came with a um, initial grant of up to $10,000 and then a loan subsequently. If you got a loan for under that program for $25,000 or more, or excuse me, more than $25,000, the SBA places a UCC1 filing. And this is basically a notice with the courthouse that says, hey, we have interest in the property of this business. If you're gonna think about extending them financing, um, understand that we have first dibs on the property that's covered. UCC1 is actually a pretty broad filing. So that one would be a heads up to other creditors that the SBA has this you know, broad interest in property. But other um, lenders or financing sources may place it. It could be against all receivables. It could be against inventory. It could be you get an equipment lease and they have a UCC filing for that equipment. So if you don't pay, they can repossess the equipment and they're first in line to do so. Our experience at NAV has been that sometimes these creditors are really good about placing the UCC filing, but they're not great about releasing the UCC filing. So if you find one of these on your uh, NAV, on your credit reports that you check through NAV, we're not placing them, it's the credit bureau that is, is uh, listing that information, then you want to make sure it's accurate and up to date. And if necessary, you may have to dispute that. And we have a couple of articles that can help you navigate that process if you're in that situation. Bankruptcy may show up and sometimes it's inconsistent. So I went, anyone can check business credit. So I checked the business credit of a well-known business that I knew had filed for bankruptcy. And one of the bureaus listed three bankruptcies, the other listed five, and then one listed none because it wasn't picking up bankruptcy. So it's going to vary depending on the credit bureau that you're checking what they pick up. But that's something important, especially right now, because a lot of businesses are in distress. Tax liens may show up. And again, you want to make sure this is accurate and uh, up to date so that if, for example, you don't know anymore, um, that it shows a zero balance on it. So then the question I often get when I talk about negative information is, well, how long does this information report? 
And the answer is it varies. It depends on the Bureau. There's no law that says that they have to take negative information off after seven years, like there is on consumer credit, where most information can't be reported after seven years. So I had to kind of pull teeth to get this together, but I managed to find at least some information from the major commercial credit agencies about how long they report certain types of information. And this is what they um, list is what they report. You may, your results may vary. You may see only two years of information, but this is what they publicly do announce that they're able to report if they choose to for um, what this, what the categories of derogatory information includes. So again, this is will be on your handout if you need to look at that in more detail. Now, another important part of your business credit is the time in business. And that's important because lenders know that the longer a business is in business, the more likely it is to stay in business and newer businesses have a harder time succeeding. And so this is one reason why you want to start building business credit even before you need it. So if you can start this process with a vendor account and a small business credit card early on, then a couple years into your business, if you're ready to really ramp up and grow your business, you're gonna be in a better position than a business that didn't start it at all. So it's something where you wanna start it early because that history can help your business in the future. Finally, inquiries. I get a lot of questions about inquiries and for the most part, inquiries are not a big deal at all with business credit. Um, some reports don't even list them at all. It's not gonna affect your paydex score, for example. Experian um, says that they'll count the first inquiry, but after that, they'll ignore subsequent inquiries. So I wouldn't be too worried about business credit inquiries hurting your business credit. It's just not likely that that's going to be the case. All right, one more tip before I give you a couple of resources, and that is I want to encourage you to think like a lender. So NAV was co-founded by Levi King, who's a serial entrepreneur, and his first business was um, sign manufacturing in Idaho in his 20s. And this is actually a sign from a business where he acquired a bunch of um, equipment from that business and he ended up with his business credit getting mixed up with them, et cetera. But one of his many stories was he had a customer, they had a chain of Mexican restaurants in the local area and the client was uh, difficult to deal with. He would constantly string them out for payment and he'd ask to get paid and then he'd give them a little bit just to keep them going and then he'd give them a new big assignment. And in the meantime, Levi's business had to, you know, they had to fork out money for labor and cement and the equipment that needed to install the sign, the plastic, et cetera. So finally, one day, uh, Levi read a story about firing your customers and he fired the customer. He said, I'm done. And uh, so he went in the next day to the business owner and said, here's how much you owe me. I'm not doing any more work for you. And it turns out that that business owner had burnt his bridges with every other sign manufacturing company in a reasonable distance and had no choice but to work out a payment schedule to catch up and then pay on time going forward. So if you and your business are supplying anything, anything, including your time or expertise to another business and you're not getting paid up front, you're a lender and you have to think like a lender. And what do lenders do? Lenders check credit, right? So while you can't check business, uh, personal credit without uh, an account, you know, a like commercial account that will let you do so, you can check business credit on a business. And I would highly encourage it. I went into I went into a project with a business partner many years ago where I ended up getting completely ripped off. Um, he owed me at least forty thousand dollars when all of a sudden done. I never saw a penny, and you know, I ended up writing up writing off his experience. And I wish I checked his business credit because chances are if he wasn't paying me, he wasn't paying others. So one thing you can do with a paid NAV account is you can check uh, other businesses credit and monitor it. So that might be a key supplier, it might be a key competitor, it might be a company you're thinking about acquiring, it might be a business you want to go into partnership with. Any of those could be instances where it makes sense for you to check or monitor business credit on another business. All right, so I've given you some tips. I hope you found this a useful, um, a useful presentation. I would encourage you, if you don't already, to, ha to sign up for a free NAV account. Again, it's completely free, doesn't affect your personal credit. Um, the inquiry is a soft inquiry. It doesn't affect your business credit, because as we mentioned, 
inquiries aren't a factor. And it will allow you to check and monitor your personal credit through Experian, your business credit through those three major agencies I mentioned, and it will help you build business credit too. So the, the instructions that I gave you in the um, e-guide also translate into the product itself. We have a business launcher that walks you through those same instructions and will help you build business credit. And then the other thing I'd encourage you to do, ultimately the goal with building business credit is to get better financing, right? That's what NAV is about. We're a marketplace. We work with over 110 different financing sources around the country. And when you have a NAV account, we'll match you to offers from lenders looking for businesses that fit your profile. And so you'll see those in your NAV account. Now here's a tip. We'll ask you to connect your bank account and this is read-only access. We can't take the money out of your bank account by doing that. It's similar to what Mint does or Personal Capital, any of those sites do to monitor your you know, personal finances, same technology. But what it does is that information about the revenues in your business is crucial to certain lenders. And so it can open you up to more financing offers. So when it asks you to fill out your profile, do so because that could help you get more and better financing in the future. So if you don't have a NAV account, check that out. We offer uh, customer support. So if you have a question as you're setting up your NAV account or a question as you're building your credit, you can contact our customer service department. They're happy to help you. We also have a great credit and lending team. And if you're looking for financing specifics and you don't understand what's in your NAV account, no pressure. You could reach out to them and they're happy to help you understand and navigate through your options.